I'm trying to think about all kinds of experiences I've had of being outdoors in a storm. What the overall feeling of that was and what the colors were and the, you know, the textures of the water or the leaves, you name it. Just to try and keep that getting channeled somehow into the, into the actual artwork. When people ask me what I do, I tell them I'm an illustrator. Way against the right side of the whole spread. Imagine, you know, the book is going to be like this. It's kind of like saying, I'm a fireman or I'm a policeman. People get it. And you open it up and it's like, whoa, all this, the words are here and just everything is pushing, pushing, pushing. Even though it sounds very concise being an illustrator, there's lots of different ways to be an illustrator. Like this way, you got the cattails marching along and then these poor birds just like, protecting each other almost. Today I'm gonna, you're gonna look over my shoulder and make me work harder to paint the illustrations for Over in the Wetlands. So um, I'll work on two of those paintings and just for fun I'll show you some of the process of how decisions are made, how sketches are made to actually develop a children's book. Using kind of a burnt umber mixed with God knows what, greens and sienna and other colors in there. It's really just it doesn't really matter at this point. This is where the philosophy of art comes in that, so it's like, don't be afraid to screw up. These are common egrets. They have black legs, so here we go. This is the middle bird, so. You just really have to kind of just go for it. How's the bird going to stand otherwise, right? this gives us. Paintings are the fun part of making books. It's all fun, but paintings are kind of the, uh, you, you know, your, your moment in the spotlight, so to speak. But I'm working on another story. I just got the manuscript a few days ago. And in this case, I've, I'm uh, doing some uh, preliminary work on a, uh, on a new book. It's about a baby owl who just goes out flying one night and sees stuff, and then he goes back home. And he snuggles back with mom and dad, and that's the end of the story. But right now, we're just worried about getting down some, some ideas and maybe exploring the character a little bit. You know, you can see that he's got the wanderlust. He wants to check these sparkling stars out. And in the, then we turn the page of the book, and, you know, here we are. Very quickly, he's on the move, and then, boom, he's flying by the third spread. This owl is flying. So there's a lot of things we want to try to show there. The absolute giddiness of it, the uh, mischievousness of it, the total daredevil quality in this little guy uh, who we're rooting for from the very beginnings. You know, everybody loves an owl. They're sort of like kittens in a way, the kittens of the bird world. The task ahead of me now, once I've got my sketches kind of cooking, kind of figured out, is I want to see how they look in a digital dummy. It's so easy to just stop and start on something else when you're not sure, but other times you just have to power through it. It's not rocket science. It's more like boxing, probably. You just have to keep sparring and discovering what you want to say. And then it's all done, and no one calls back, so it must be okay. So <laughs> it's nice. Once you've committed to making art every day, it changes the way you see the world. It, it changes the way people see you. And, and then there's all sort of the, the research that you get to do sometimes. You uh, go to the library, you go to zoos, you go to museums, and you draw stuff. But more than anything, I think what it's about is that art gives you a way of seeing the world. You know, life is pretty cool, but it's all around us, and the artist's job is to zero in on some, some part of it and magnify it. And then show that to other people and, uh, you know, let them kind of feel the joy. Anything that um, enhances uh, living, I think, is uh, 
why um, art exists in the first place.